It's a common misconception that uh, comedians are as funny off stage as they are on stage. However, behind the painted smile, comedians are often miserable, dour, and thoroughly unhappy individuals. Consider this carefully as you prepare to meet seemingly well-adjusted funny guys, Aid Edmondson and Rick Mayo. <laughs> I've, ups I've upset you, haven't I? You're going to act all dour and miserable now, I've introduced you like that. No, no, we'll be all right, John, we promise. It's live, isn't it? Yeah, it is live. Uh, <laughs> now, you're, you're both... <laughs> you're... Yeah, it is live. You're both, of course, you're both fathers, of course, as I'm sure many both people what? might know. Both fathers. Oh, yes. <laughs> what did you think I said? It's before 6.30, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you're both fathers. Now, you've seen the Michael Jackson video. Were you shocked by that? Would you protect your young ones from that blatant display of violence? I didn't see it. Have you seen it? Uh, I, I saw a bit of it, yeah. I don't really like pop music, so... Fair enough. <laughs> has he had everything lifted, though? I mean, is he... I'd like to think that there's a little bit still hanging. Is it, is it, is it, yeah. is it, or has he had a knobble lifted? <laughs> oh, that's, 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 that's what it's... Rick, with now, the uh, now, let's, now, now, how old are you fellas now? Let me just ask you that question first. Uh, I'm 23 now. Yeah, yeah. And then you have been, uh, I must be 22 then. Yeah. So you must be... Uh, okay. now, you're getting old, as we can all see. Um, are you slowing down in your old age? Are you, are you getting a bit more reasonable? Yeah, calm? I can last for two minutes now. <laughs> uh, no, Rick, you see... You, you're, you see... No, no, no. No! Please do not encourage the man. <laughs> we'll just do more of it. Um, let me have a look. I want to show a clip because, of course, you know, we're, 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 we're beginning to talk comedy here. Yeah. A clip of some of your early stuff, some stuff which I always thought was terribly underrated, you as the Dangerous Brothers. And then I want to compare that and show a clip afterwards of some of your more recent, more mature, more considered work. So right. this is uh, two clips in a row. Enjoy this. <laughs> A much more fashionable and much more effective torture these days, ladies and gentlemen, is of course torture by electricity. Surprise! <laughs> 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 so surprise! Kick in the ghoulies! <laughs> surprise, Mysteria! Well, get this for a shocker. Surprise increase in voltage. <laughs> 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 Which one is it? It's the third one on the left. <laughs> but this might make your eyes water. <laughs> It just occurred to me, when you, do, when you do both those things, I guess they weren't done in front of an audience, were they? They uh, weren't done cold. No, neither of those bits were, actually. They, so, and here you get a great response from an audience, which you surely yeah. you miss. Is it harder to do it without the crowd? Well, no, we, we usually do stuff to a live audience, but it just happens that those two little bits weren't. I chose your two yeah. hardest bits to yes. do. And I was very pleased to see you both sitting there giggling at your own material. <laughs> we're all, we're all great fans. Yeah. Now, do you, you must. Do you With hurt yourself through, doing yeah. that sort of thing? Because that and also the early stuff, the young ones, all the time, you were throwing yourself through walls, and uh, not real walls, I imagine, but yeah. through uh, fake walls, which still must damage. Do you, do you well, you, you, you've seen through our tricks. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, I mean, notice that slightly on bottom. I mean, I had to throw myself through a door, and it wasn't quite as easy as it, as it used to be. As you'd hope. You know. So we're going to have to start moving on, maybe throwing other people through doors or something. <laughs> that would be a good, a logical position. Now, yeah. you mentioned Bottom, of course, that was the name of the show. And I think people, even a casual observer of your, your, both your careers, would recognise that there seems to be an obsession with that particular part of the anatomy. Some of the language you use, I mean, fartly breath, I encountered the first time, thanks to you. Ploppy pants also came my way, thanks to your <laughs> televisual work. Um, <laughs> now, most of us, I like to think, do grow out of that phase. And here you are, both in your 40s. Now, you've got the... When are you going <laughs> to... When are you going to pull back from this material? I need my waist measurement. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's a sense of irony these days, really. Um, oh. Yeah. Oh, well. oh, dear. No, I disagree. I, I, I still find the word bottom incredibly funny. I think most people do. Yeah. It's just uh, people pretend to be grown up and kind of lose their sense of fun. See, well, I think the punters know that we're sticking two fingers up to Alan Yentob when we call him bottom. But you're sticking two fingers and giving him one of his most successful comedy series. Yeah, we even beat Thunderbirds. Um, which is something these days, and you're almost as funny as them, of course, as well. <laughs> uh, no now, one thing I must be asked, and I've been asked by the director of that show to ask is, will there be another series of Bottom? Because he's as much in the dark as everyone else. That's right, it's actually true. It's actually true. He doesn't know, and he did phone the show, didn't he? And will, he phoned up and said, you've got him on the show, can you please ask me if I'm in work next year? Which I thought was rather pathetic, but there you go. Uh, Very will possibly. You be doing, will you be doing another one? We might. Yeah, we will. We will. Yeah, we what will. kind of a Christmas gift is that to give the poor man? <laughs> 
Uh, now, do you two, obviously you get on well, you work together, and it's something, you know, I know comedians aren't known for this, but I get the feeling you maybe you do. Do you hang out together socially? Do you see one another? No. We, we don't really meet. We meet on chat shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this then is an exciting moment for both of you. Not really. No. <laughs> I've done too many chat shows now, really. But you can't leave. Not my chat show joke, that's it. That's it, yeah. <laughs> and I'll come and see the show. And I believe you successfully toured with that joke as well. I though, did, I yeah. yeah. Um, Two-hour routine, that was. But now, if we're going to step away from comedy, and I guess I'm right in saying that it's away from comedy, maybe not, you're doing Godot, you're doing Waiting for Godot, the Beckett play in the West End at the moment, which I was maybe a bit surprised to see you in, knowing you as your comedy work, and also I wonder whether it was hard for you to get taken seriously full stop to do work like that. Well, do you know the play? Not at all. Have you, you I've, seen, I've seen some Beckett stuff, but I always find it's very dreary, and it's normally Billy Whitelaw buried up to her neck or something. You know, yeah. it's just not a lot of laughs. And it I normally know. is, but we, we found Waiting for God when we were both at, at uh, separate schools, um, and we found it very funny. And when we met at university, it was our love of that kind of humour that started us writing together. And we think, uh, in, a, in, our, in our folly, that uh, our writing is a bit Beckettian. So um, could, one, could one then look no, back you, and maybe, you, you, you could, one find, could one find quiet, please, floppy quiet, pants in Bob Beckett? You can. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you can. Well, that's what I was going to make. <laughs> this, this, uh, this, there are fart jokes, there are okay. bottom jokes. There's uh, a poo joke. Poo joke. But, and, it's but it's pretty good, I mean... It, but those three there, that would be like four two. hours of Beckett you've just described, I would imagine, wouldn't well, they? Well, God is kind of his funniest stuff, I think. Yeah. Um, I don't really like much of the rest of it. Do, like you, it. do you play it for laughs or do you do it as a fairly standard... Or we play it the way we see it and we've always found it very funny. We're not kind of taking the piss out of it. Can you say that for half a six? No. Uh, oh, oh dear. Um, <clears throat> if, you've got a, if you've got a bleak vision like Sam had, has, had, has had, then... Uh, I'll write that one down. Be <laughs> <a minute. laughs> and you say you don't do a lot of chat <laughs> shows, Rick, eh? <laughs> if you... Yeah, <laughs> Lovely weather. <laughs> um, if, you have a nice a suit. Bit, if you have a vision as bleak as that, then the only way to deal with it, if you're just hanging around and you don't know what's going to happen and you're never ever going to know, then you may as well pass the time telling gags, which is basically what God is about. Which is basically the play, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. And I suppose putting comedians in it. Now, Steve Martin and, and Robin Williams have played it a while ago in New York, I guess. Yeah. But apparently yeah. they kept jumping off the stage, or Robin did, anyway. <laughs> Robin. <laughs> <laughs> so they are going, going into routines. <laughs> so they played it much more for laughs than, than you would consider. They played for their own laughs. He apparently yeah. improvised a lot of his own material into the, into the play. Which isn't really fair game, now, is it? Well, well I didn't uh, see it. I would have liked to have seen it. Okay. Work. Now, now you've just come, you were, not just come back, but you've had a movie out in Hollywood. You're Drop Dead Fred, yeah. playing uh, you and the gorgeous Phoebe Cates. Mm -hmm. uh, now, is there a future for you there? And if so, will you be leaving poor well, sad aid on his own here in, here in the, in the US? <laughs> but you did sleep with it, didn't you? Well, you have to. It's obligatory. Do do, Don't yeah. tell Kevin Clark. <laughs> <laughs> what about that? Will there be? A, are you thinking of Dangerous Brothers, the movie? Well, I think it's better the kind of cottage industry. We make it over here and then export it elsewhere. There's too. There was stuff I wanted to do with Fred that the Yanks thought was a bit too much. There was yeah. a good scene in a toilet that I thought was very funny that got cut. You see, that's taste. A, there's a taste thing, you know. But that's unlike you. A good scene in a toilet, with, isn't it? One wouldn't <laughs> normally think that you would try and slip that into a movie. <laughs> so you I think, it, uh, to answer your question, I think the best thing is to make our stuff over here and yeah. then export it. They've had the young ones over there. But um, you see, just sitting in, I don't know how you well. I met you briefly, but I can see that you're a very sane person and you are obsessed with bums. <laughs> Every you know sentence, even when you're talking about Becky. You've slipped it in, or out, or whatever. I don't so, know. <laughs> so what? No, I'm just making a comment now. I'm just passing the time of day and giving you a little, you know, yeah, yeah, having a bit of a chat. Bit of free therapy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's been lovely having you on the show. Yes. And uh, thanks, Aidan, and, and get well soon, Rick. We Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> hang, hang around. <laughs> now, I didn't mean that at all unkindly. I hope you realise. <laughs> uh, before you go, fellas, I would like your opinion. I would like to know what, what, you would give me, what you would give me for this. I don't know what you would think of this. This is um, something, I don't know whether you would wear this with pride, but this is one of Madonna's very own golden Gautier uh, gusseted basques. She's very small, isn't she? She's much smaller than you think. And these are padded, believe it or not, ladies and gentlemen. Look. I had no idea. Yes, look. God, mm. blimey. Um, there you go. And this is, I'll tell you why I'm showing you this, because this is one of the many items of pop memorabilia being auctioned off by Shelter this Friday. Um, I don't know how much they'd get for a set of your wife ones, Rick, but you might be interested in going down there. Do you want to give it a quick squeeze as well? Yes. There you go. Uh, so there you go. That, that's all happening this weekend. Get yourself down there. We're going to take a commercial break now. Um, one final thing. Last time one of these went up for auction, it fetched the record sum of £9,000. Wow. So treat it with care. Um, so there you go. <laughs> We're going to take a break. Join us afterwards and I'll be chatting to Mark Lawson and Annette Gardner. See you then. <laughs>